guys and welcome back to the emergency nurse crash course series so this video is going to be in two parts and this is all about respiratory emergencies so your patient comes in through triage one of the first things they do when your patient comes through in triage is a TB screening. And also when your patient comes in through EMS, they do the same thing. The TB screening is basically just a list of questions to see what your risk of TB is. And I'll post a sample somewhere up here so you guys can kind of get a feel of what we would ask them in the hospital setting. If your patient scores five or more in this TB screening assessment, they're going to be automatically put in a surgical mask and they're going to be put in a negative flow room. Basically, this just means that the air is not flowing out of the room outside other patients room and around the hospital because that would be terrible to be <laughs> flowing TB freely around the hospital. So that is the first part of our respiratory assessment. So now into some respiratory emergencies. One of the first ones I'm going to talk about is croup. So croup is something that affects children. Whether you're in a pediatric emergency room or an adult emergency room, you still see pediatric patients, so you need to know how to take care of some of the emergencies that come along with pediatric patients. Croup is basically just an upper airway infection and it's characterized by a barking cough. Once you hear a croup cough, you will know what a croup cough is. Some other signs and symptoms that can go along with it is a low-grade fever, accessory muscle use when breathing, and inspiratory strider. Strider is basically just a high-pitched wheezing that you hear on auscultation. Strider is just caused by a disrupted airflow which is making that noise that you hear. So some of the treatments for croup is uh, possibly a soft tissue x-ray of the upper airways. Um, you're definitely going to want to keep this patient hydrated. Give them steroids to uh, decrease the inflammation in the airways. Definitely, definitely for every single patient that comes in, but especially for patients that come in with any type of respiratory issues, you want to make sure you have your O2 monitor on them at all times because at any point in time, this patient can go south and you will have no idea unless you have your monitor on them. So steroids, fluid hydration, O2 monitor, and humidified O2 to kind of keep those secretions loose. So the next respiratory emergency is also something that affects kids mostly. It's called epiglottitis. This is something that's a little bit more rare, but they talked about this in nursing school and they also taught this in our ENCC class. So basically what it is, is it's a bacterial infection that causes inflammation. And once you know that your patient has epiglottitis and you visualize it or the doctor visualize it, do not put anything else in that patient's mouth. You don't want to check on it. You don't want to see how it's doing because any type of disruption can just close that airway. So what it is, is epiglottitis is your airway is like, say your airway is normally like this. When the patient has epiglottitis, it shrinks to about nothing. And any type of disruption, crying, agitation can close the airway like this and your patient has no way of breathing. And then you'd have to do an emergency trick to get some type of air in this patient. So especially if it's a baby or a kid, give that baby whatever they want to make sure they do not cry because any type of agitation is going to close off their airway. So these patients are going to come in with muffled voices, sore throats, difficulty breathing, high fever, tripoding, which is basically leaning over to try to get air into their lungs. Also drooling because they can't swallow these secretions that they're producing. This, you want to give them supportive treatment, you know, oxygen and definitely antibiotics. Again, most important things with this patient is do not agitate them, supportive treatment, and prepare for emergency trach if necessary. So the next respiratory emergency is foreign body. This again is something that can affect kids more, but this can happen to anyone. This can happen when kids get a hold of little tiny toys or anything they find around the house and it gets lodged in their airway. And you don't always know this happens. There was a story that I've heard something about a kid swallowed a little toy and it was stuck in the airway for so long and nobody noticed it. And by the time they found it, like half of the esophagus was eroded and it was just like a mess. So the things you're going to see with this is respiratory distress because think of it, there's something lodged in your throat and it's closing off a little bit of your breathing space <laughs> you're gonna see drooling you're gonna see strider again you're gonna hear wheezes when you auscultate this patient and possibly even unequal breath sounds so treatment of this obviously if the patient is not breathing basic life support start your cpr they're gonna do a chest x-ray to see where this uh foreign body is lodged in again avoid distressing this patient because any type of upset can close off those airways and also some people might want to give glucagon glucagon is not only 
mainly for patients with low blood sugar. It also relaxes the smooth muscle to allow the foreign body to pass. In some extreme cases, you might even need to surgically remove whatever is stuck in there. Next emergency is bronchitis. So basically what bronchitis is, it's an inflammation of the lining of your bronchioles. It's usually developed after you have a cold or flu or some type of res upper respiratory infection. Some of the signs and symptoms that go along with this are trouble breathing, cough, especially late at night and early in the morning, pale, cold skin, um, wheezing, silent breath sounds which is a really bad sign something you don't want to hear also diminished breath sounds treatment is rest oxygen bronchodilators like albuterol anything that's going to help keep those airways open steroids also to decrease that inflammation anticholinergics like atrovent atrovent or atrovert i hope i'm saying that right atro something atrovent anyway so the next emergency is pneumonia pneumonia is kind of common but pneumonia is also very very dangerous it's actually the fifth leading cause of death in elderly patients so pneumonia is an infection that affects your alveoli which may cause your alveoli to fill with fluid signs and symptoms are cough chest pain fever, echocardia, tachypnea, recent upper respiratory infection, chills, and purulent sputum. And sputum is just like stuff you cough up, that nastiness, that phlegm, that's what sputum is. Kind of just looks like pus, which is kind of disgusting. Treatment for this is oxygen. You want to make sure you get IV access to give them plenty of fluids. You want to give them steroids. You're going to get a chest x-ray and they're going to get antibiotics. All right, guys, so that is the end of part one. Make sure you guys stay tuned for part two of respiratory emergencies.